uh, Corey and Sanford, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me about TA, the exercise physiology class. This year, in addition to the normal duties associated with TA, um, I'm going to ask that you give your bodies to science. That's something you think you'd be willing to do? We, we, have, we have to work out for, for 10 weeks. <laughs> yes, you do. You have to work out hard for 10 weeks. So you're going to go shoot for some really high goals. So this is going to be probably harder than you worked out since you were on the crew team and since you were in early, early stages of track. So I've written up a couple contracts here that you can look through. Corey will be expected to train on the bicycle to increase his aerobic capacity by 12% over the 10-week quarter. Sanford will need to engage in a vigorous weight training program to gain 10 pounds of muscle in 10 weeks. <laughs> Where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look, your RER values are 0.74. You really haven't eaten much today. Yeah. All right, 10 seconds and we're going up, we hope. <laughs> this is working right. Where are you at, sir? Okay, up we go. Yes, up we go. <laughs> so this is the Velotron bike. It's showing how hard he's working what his heart rate is, how fast he's pedaling. This is the metabolic cart. So this is showing what his oxygen consumption is and how much CO2 he's producing there in blue. Come on, Sanford, come on. Oh, there we go. All right, you're working. Way to go. Ten seconds. Come on. Push Sanford. You got it. All right, all right, all right. Is that it? You done? Good. Nice job. Uh, it was way up there. Um, yeah, almost 1.21. 1. 1. So usually they're right about in here when those curves cross over, when the CO2 and the O2 curves cross over. So it's another indicator for us how close he is. Yeah, now you're popping that VO2 up. You're looking great. Looking great. Oh wait, Corey, come on. Come on. You got this. Just 30 seconds. <laughs> you got it, Corey. Keep that speed Play up. Hard. Come on, Corey. <laughs> All right, <laughs> bring you down. Good job. <laughs> also, is the brake still on in the back? Mm -mm. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> come on, every rep, every rep. Let's go. Drop and drive, drop and drive. Let's go. Chest up, chest up, chest up. Keep pushing. All right. I'm bringing the waters down. I'm bringing the waters down. Just keep those legs spinning a little bit. You take off the head through whenever you want. Single it now. Single it. Got to work hard here. We got to work hard. Come on. Go hard. Finish, finish, finish. Way to finish it. Way to go. Keep pushing. All right. Well, you've been a lot farther, didn't you? You went a whole stage farther. How did this? How did these lifts feel different than when you first started? I, I definitely feel stronger. Um, yeah, just I guess just feels feels better overall. Um, in the very beginning, you kind of feel a little. You feel a little unstable, I guess. Good. And you've been putting on weight, right? Yeah. So I'm up about about eight pounds right now. So hopefully that's muscle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The TAs are back for their final testing round. Corey's getting his body composition done, so on the DEXA. Now they've traded places. Sanford is getting his DEXA scan done to get his body composition and bone density. Corey and Sanford look over their body composition results. They did very well on the bone density at least. There are well several standard deviations above normal, and very close in value. But I don't know. Sanford's looking at his end results in lean mass. <laughs> No. And it's looking like he's going to have to shave his legs a little bit. <laughs> come on. Come on, lock come on, in. Lock. Tight. Come on, drive. This is, if he does this for reps, this is probably about uh, 10 pounds heavier, I'm sorry, 20 pounds heavier than what his estimated one rep max was um, 
what, three weeks, four weeks ago when we did our midterm testing with them. Hmm. So that's huge. Yeah, it's it is pretty. Big. So it's like a over five to ten percent increase. Yeah, I would say it's over a ten percent increase. Yeah. Come on, baby. What do you got left? What do you got left? Squeeze it now. Let's go, Sam. Come on, baby. What do you got left? Come on. Just up. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Get them all. Squeeze it. Come on. Come on. Chest up. Here we go. Come on, baby. Squeeze it. His squat went up about 8%. Is that a, a significant gain that you see? Absolutely, absolutely. And it has to do, too, with how we changed his training a little bit, too, where we focus more on the strength power aspect um, rather than um, a lot of hypertrophy type training. You know, instead of just working out and, you know, kind of noticing a little bit, like, oh, I'm a little bit bigger, I'm a little bit more fit, if you actually pay attention to kind of like the numbers and the actual progress you're making, it's a little, a little bit more inspiring at the end when you, you know, You've improved, you know, your running time by like a certain number of minutes, or you know, your strength by X number of pounds. Yeah. And that's one of the great motivators with physical activity is when you start to track it and see those changes, that'll keep you coming back for more. And sometimes you don't get the results that you're looking for. <laughs> my VO2 max, which was my biggest goal, is kind of my baby as far as an indicator for improvement over my quarter training. Uh, didn't in improve it actually. Somehow went down from my baseline after improvement at midline and uh, involved with that is getting sick and taking some time off training and stuff like that too. But um, it's interesting. I, I mean, I was very disappointed. Yesterday I was very disappointed. Mm -hmm. So the VO2 max is a very isolated test. It tests a particular thing in physiology, your time trial performance and real yeah. life performance in an environment right. where you know, you know everyone goes, you know everyone's times and you did a lot better on that. So mm -hmm. that's huge. So do you think you're going to keep cycling? I think I will keep cycling, actually. Uh, I've made a couple of friends now who really like to cycle. and Does this include the 13-year-olds that you made cry today? <laughs> yeah, because the 13-year-olds that I made cry today. So the story is that two of my best training partners are these two 13-year-old female twins. And before you judge me, they're really talented. All right, they're really good at biking, uh, which they, they really are. They've been biking since they were six. Uh, they're quite quite good. But anyway, they've destroyed me from the very beginning, the first week. We went up together when I was learning how to bike, and they laughed at me as I tipped over because I couldn't unclip my pedal and all that stuff. Um, and slowly I've been, like, chasing them and getting a little bit better and a little bit better, and today was finally the crossover day where uh, I, <laughs> I beat these two little 13-year-old girls up. This is, like, literally the seventh time we've gone up Old Honda together, which is a three-something mile. I think it's three and a half. But... Three and a half. Um, but yeah, so it was exciting. It's exciting to improve, but also it's an important perspective to realize that beating a 13-year-old is not the end-all be-all. I made her cry, and I feel more bad about making her cry <laughs> than I do good about getting better. So <laughs> She's got to learn, you know, <laughs> failure, Life, too. Life, awesome. yeah. Life is about you can't always too. be on top. Yeah. <laughs>